What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your Friendly Reef Talk. And today I'm gonna to tell you my top seven things that only new reefers do. If this is your first time at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, let's take a look. Number seven on my list of things only new reefers do is buying corals on clean frag plugs. Whether you're looking for your first SPS coral, your first LPS coral, or even your first ever coral of any type, the chances are all you're interested in is the shiny new animal in front of your eyes. But if that coral is on a frag plug like these, it's almost certainly been cut from a larger coral. And when that happens, the newly fragged coral will need time to heal and recover before it's ready for sale. If it hasn't had that time, there's a much higher chance of it dying shortly after you introduce it to your tank. And a pristine white frag plug is a telltale sign that the coral has only just been fragged. While you don't want a frag plug covered in stringy algae or aptasia anemones, a frag plug that's a little dirty, off-white, or maybe even has a smidge of nice purple coralline algae is a good sign of a coral that's had time to recover from the stress of being fragged. And ideally, you'll even be able to see that the coral has based out over the plug itself. Number six is relying on fish shops and Facebook for advice. Your local fish shop is the most obvious place to go for advice as a beginner. But the problem with that is that they have a vested interest in selling you something, so their advice is likely to be biased. And even with that aside, I've heard some shocking advice given out by shops who really should know better. Facebook groups are also a really common place for newbies to seek advice, and there are some groups like Worldwide Reefing that are great for quick snippets of advice. But all too often on Facebook, you'll be getting advice from someone who's been in the hobby for six months and thinks they're an expert. Being social media, you also regularly see people becoming patronizing or telling you how irresponsible you are for buying a fish without researching when all you want is a bit of friendly advice to dig you out of a hole. That's not true of all Facebook groups or fish shops, but the best place to get detailed advice tailored to your situation from experienced hobbyists is online forums. Ultimate Reef in the UK and Reef to Reef in the States are among the best places. There are hundreds or even thousands of people on forums, so you'll get a sensible broad range of advice, and you can always check the advisor's credentials by seeing what their very own tank looks like. Number five on my list of things only new briefers do is not testing water after making changes. You should of course test your water parameters regularly, but that goes double after you make a change. Whether it's getting a new light, changing your Roafoss or GFO, or if you start adding coral food. Whatever change you make to your usual routine is likely to have an impact on your parameters. If you start adding coral food like Red Sea Reef Energy, the chances are your corals will grow more quickly and so they'll use more alkalinity and calcium. The same goes if you increase your lighting and even adding new Roafoss will have an impact on your alkalinity. If that goes unchecked, your parameters will drift which could have a detrimental effect on your tank. Corals thrive on stability, and when you change something in your tank, it's likely to have an impact on something, so make sure you run a full test of parameters so you catch any change before it harms your corals. Number four is making a purchase without doing research. Now, it's probably a slight stretch to say only newbies do this, as everyone loves the occasional impulse buy. But it's certainly something you grow out of after a couple of mistakes. Classic examples are buying Regal Tangs, aka Dory, only to find out they get huge and need large tanks, or buying a coral like Clove Polyps without realizing they can take over your entire tank. It's obviously best to read a few articles before you buy anything in your tank to make absolutely sure you'll be able to properly care for it. But as a bare minimum, a quick Google while you're in your local fish shop will stop you dropping a clanger like buying that cute little dotty back only to find out later that it's a trained assassin. Into the top three of things only new reefers do then, and we have a big one, buying RO water. You should think of this hobby as keeping water, not keeping fish and corals. The quality of the water in your tank is the single most important thing to get right in this hobby, and trusting that to your local fish shop is a hell of a risk. Most shops I've asked don't keep their RODI water at zero TDS, which is what you should be aiming for. Anything higher than that, and you could be introducing nasties like phosphate, nitrate, silicate, or even copper. The main reason new reefers don't make their own water is that they think they'll get it wrong, or because they think RODI filters are complicated. But an RODI filter is essentially just a big version of a Brita water filter, and there are dozens of guides here on YouTube showing you how they work. They're really easy to use, they'll save you having to lug water back and forth from your local fish shop every weekend, and they'll pay for themselves in no time. But most importantly, they give you control over your own water supply. If you only take one thing from this video, make it this and buy yourself an RODI filter. I'll put a link in the description so you can see the sort of thing you should be getting. 
And in at number two is buying traditional beginner corals. I'm talking about things like plain mushrooms and leather corals, or even beginner SPS corals like plating Montipora. When it comes to buying corals, it is of course important to make sure you don't run before you can walk. But the most popular searches on the net among new reefers are for the hardiest corals. That means things like toadstools and mushrooms, which are nigh on impossible to kill. But the chances are you'll get bored of them pretty quickly, and there are loads of hardy corals that are great for beginners that you won't grow out of in six months. I've done two whole videos on this subject alone, so I won't labour the point, but in a hobby with such a huge range of variety of colour, you don't need to restrict yourself when you buy your first coral. And the number one thing that only new briefers do is stopping water changes just because everything looks okay. Water changes are the staple of the hobby when it comes to replenishing beneficial elements like calcium and alkalinity that your corals use over time, and diluting harmful pollutants like nitrate and phosphate that cause algae outbreaks. There are more advanced ways of achieving those aims, but as a beginner it's pretty much unanimously accepted that water changes are an essential tool for keeping your water in tip-top condition or fixing problems with your water. But changing 10% of your tank's water volume every week can be a bit of a hassle, particularly if you have to make your own fresh water and mix your own salt water. And it's very easy to talk yourself out of doing it if your tank is looking great and everything is going well. I've seen countless new reefers stop doing water changes and say everything is fine and there were no ill effects. Until three months down the line when algae takes over and corals start to lose their colour or even start dying. There probably won't be an instant impact, but that 10% weekly difference can build up over time to have a major impact. And trying to fix problems in a reef tank is like trying to turn a tank around. Water changes aren't a miracle cure, and there will be plenty of reefers who still have problems, even if weekly water changes are maintained. But along with using pristine quality RO water, water changes are the foundations on which your reef is built, so whatever you do, keep them up. So there you have it then, that is my top 7 list of things that only new reefers do. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.